post-procedure care and follow-up? When are you seeing these patients again? How are you meeting expectations? What are those kind of conversations like the day of the procedure when you send them home, but also next time you see them? Yeah, no, we usually try to get them to come back pretty soon just for the standard routine. So there's usually some two to four week follow-up, certainly keeping an open dialogue with them. They all have our contact information. If there's a problem at the puncture site or they're having pain, which may be the two concerns that are the most common that we hear about in the post-procedure period, we can usually manage those either over the phone or with a quick visit in the office earlier than that. But generally, the expectations we give them is that this may not make a big difference right away, so be patient. There are certainly some patients that will, and I'm sure all the audience who does this will will have patients that'll say that, you know, they'll go see patients in their recovery room and the patient will already say they feel better. And there's a lot of reasons for that, why that may be happening. And one of them may be that they actually do feel better. And some patients feel better very quickly. But for others, it can take time. If you look at the sort of visual analog scale curve of pain versus time that was recently published in JVIR by Dee Gregorio and colleagues. I think they treated 520 patients with coil embolization only, and they use coils in all four vessels, the internal iliac veins bilaterally, as well as the ovarian veins bilaterally. They showed a very dramatic reduction in the visual analog pain score, but it took months for that to happen. And they saw their patients at one month, three months, six months, nine months, and 12 months. And if you look at the curve, the pain was going down even beyond six months. The majority of the pain had reduced at three months, but there was still a substantial amount of pain getting better at six months. So patients should be prized of the fact that it might take some time for them to feel better. And there's a lot of potential reasons for that, but it's certainly an observation that's worth sharing with them. Sure. Yeah. And so are you following that same follow-up schedule or, or is yours a little bit different? Ours is a little bit different. You know, I think many of these patients are also seeing other consultants for other things. So they may still be doing their pelvic floor therapy. They may still be doing, you know, seeing the PMNR patients for doctors for injections and their gynecologists who referred them. But we keep in contact with them. Video visits have been a, a nice way to, because there's not much to see in many of these patients. Video visits is a nice way to manage that. We find that the patients tend to call us more than in follow-up, more than other patients might. We have patients who get treated for other conditions. These patients tend to call more. You know, we have to recognize that persistent pain could be because we didn't completely treat what was venous and etiology. And so, you know, there certainly are some patients where you need to rethink them from a venous point of view. But if you really thoroughly work them up ahead of time, clearly made the decision and had no other venous issues, like a concurrent obstruction in the clinical picture, and you think you did a complete embolization, and that's one of the other reasons to advocate for doing complete reservoir ablation in addition to four-vessel venography and embolization, then other causes of pain could be present too. Now, sometimes those other causes are organic causes, like you know maybe patient had concurrent endometriosis or had something else. They could have secondary pain. It's very common for central sensitization to occur, and they can have other pain generators that are apparent but not real that also need to be dealt with. So maybe, you know, I don't know this is going to be true, but maybe the frequent association with symptoms of pelvic floor myalgia in women with venous origin chronic pelvic pain may be related to central sensitization causing pelvic floor pain or even causing painful bladder syndrome. That's another association that's frequently seen in patients with venous origin chronic pelvic pain. And those symptoms may persist after treatment because the central sensitization is there. I, if, I, if I may diverge for just one second, Aaron, just on one additional topic, there was an interesting presentation at Circe in a recent paper that I'm the editor of the journal Phlebology, so we just recently accepted it by Dr. Smith in, in the Chicago area and his colleagues in a large interventional radiology practice there. They reported on 45 consecutive pelvic venous patients that they had, which were being treated for venous origin chronic pelvic pain. And they assessed these patients for concurrent problems. And they found using questionnaires for painful bladder syndrome, the PUFF questionnaire, which is pelvic pain and urinary frequency, a, a standard interstitial cystitis, painful bladder syndrome questionnaire. 
a very high rate of patients with symptoms that would classify them as severely affected with that condition in the patients, in the 45 patients that were treating for venous origin chronic pelvic pain. Similarly, they found a very high rate of symptomatic orthostatic hypotension in those patients in a class that would be considered severe. They found a lot of hypermobile patients in that group, EDS, Ehlers-Danlos syndromes, patients and patients with hypermobility syndrome. And a very high proportion of patients had irritable bowel or met criteria for irritable bowel syndrome. After they did the embolization, they readministered the questionnaires for the painful bladder syndrome, interstitial cystitis, and the orthostatic hypotension to those patients. And they saw dramatic decreases in the severity of the symptoms reported on those questionnaires with regard to the orthostatic patients at the same level that the best possible treatment for orthostatic hypotension, which is saline infusions weekly, can cause. So there's some interesting data here to sort of tickle your mind. You know, it's nothing conclusive at this point, but it certainly gets at the possible commonality of potentially etiology of maybe these conditions, chronic pelvic pain and interstitial cystitis and orthostatic hypotension, but certainly the coexistence of these symptoms, which may at least at six month follow-up and to some extent these patients were also followed at a year, improvement in these associated symptoms. So that's information to come in the future. You'll see this paper published in Phlebology in the next probably month or so online.